Game of Thrones fans might like to imagine themselves taking up arms with the Starks or joining Daenerys Targaryen's eclectic squad. There are adventures aplenty to be had in the realm of Westeros. But before you get too enthused over the idea of becoming a, uh, Westerosi, here are some reasons why warging your way into George R. R. Martin's world from a song of ice and fire would actually be a pretty terrible experience. Belief is futile. Choosing a religion is always tricky, but in Westeros, the implications of picking who to worship are far more complex than they ever could be on Earth, because pretty much every faith has been proven true, and yet they all conflict with each other. Take for example the fact that the Lord of Light's followers relish any chance to prove their god's existence by burning or resurrecting pretty much everyone they come across. Between Melisandre's secret crone body and Jon Snow's second life, there's no doubt something real is happening there. Then there's the drowned god, who's proven that what is dead may never die, at least sometimes. Just ask Euron Greyjoy about how that works. And we also know the old gods are valid because of whatever the hell is going on with Bran Stark and his newfound bird powers. So what can you do? Choose the Lord of Light and you'll anger the Drowned God next time you're at sea. Go for the Drowned God and you might incur the wrath of the Old Gods. It's an endlessly vicious cycle of power from on high that makes even the Iron Thrones occupation look stable. Making matters worse is the fact that a lot of those religions require human sacrifices. If you're a commoner, or in some cases even a princess, you could easily find yourself on the chopping block or the pyre. Yikes. No fun in the sun. It's fairly common knowledge that seasons can last for multiple years in the world of a song of ice and fire. Westeros has been enjoying one of the longest summers in living memory by the time Game of Thrones picks up, but as we've so often heard, Winter is coming. The running theory is that the longer a summer lasts, the more brutal winter will be. So forget relishing in the sparkling sunshine with the kids. In this world, good weather is nothing but a bad omen. Talk about a killjoy. Snail mail with wings. Westerosi magic might be awesome at times, but everyone's reliance on ravens to carry messages to and fro is about as antiquated and ridiculous as it gets. Contacting someone across the Seven Kingdoms isn't like it is here. You can't just text your best friend a quick update and call it a day. You have to handwrite your notes using quills and little scrolls and pray to whichever god you chose a few minutes ago that the raven you've chosen doesn't crap out mid-flight or get intercepted by a nosy spider. Just think about that next time you get frustrated over having one bar of reception on your phone, huh? Communicable disease. Here on Earth, we might have valid concerns about potential outbreaks, but it's nothing like what the Westerosi face. Just ask Jorah Mormont how fun it is to come into contact with a stone man and start showing symptoms of grayscale. The cure for that, as we've seen, is not very pleasant. What's worse is there's no quarantined hospital bed for you to get stashed away in with an IV to ease the pain. Instead, having grayscale makes you an automatic pariah who must live out your days in exile with the other crazy stone men, who are both gross and lethal, and stone men never get visited by hospital clowns. The Faceless Arya Stark might make the faceless men seem pretty rad, but let's be real here. No one in their right mind wants to coexist with these super assassins. If you have trouble trusting your neighbors now, just imagine if you lived in a world where literally anyone could be a shape-shifting murderer in disguise who's taught to kill without question. What's worse is that in George R. R. Martin's world, you really can't even overlook your own shadow as a potential threat. Remember what happened to Renly Baratheon? All it takes is one outraged witch to take you down where you stand without a blade in sight. Snow's no. Being born out of wedlock in modern times isn't a big deal. When it comes to families nowadays, who's to say who's illegitimate anymore? In Westeros, however, being born a bastard is bad news. You're immediately condemned to a life of indignation and contempt, have no claim to your family's house, and you even have to take a name that alerts everyone to your status as less than. The best you can hope for as a bastard is to earn legitimization if you're lucky, or resign yourself to a sexless, familyless life of taking the black of the Night's Watch. And this is all just because of someone else's naughty bedroom behaviors you had nothing to do with. No fair. All the Jaws Thanks to modern civilization, we hardly have to worry about wild animals making a meal of us anymore. But in Westeros, there are several species that are just eager to feast on your flesh. Among the fabled creatures that have been confirmed to exist in the books and show are dragons and direwolves, each of which has its own unique way of bringing you a grisly and untimely end. Dracarys. And let's not forget about all those white walkers lurking on the other side of the wall that would be all too happy to turn you into a snow zombie. All it takes is one wrong turn of the horse, and you've got a good chance of coming face to face with something that's crawled out of your own nightmares. Oh, and as a bonus, your own pets can be taken over by skin changers, so even your most precious fur baby can suddenly find itself inhabited by some maniacal wildling who wants to kill you. Sleep tight, kids! 
Thanks for watching. Click the grunge icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let's check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.